Today we're looking at multiple fixes to this beautiful Rolleiflex SLX2 which was highly neglected by the previous owner and purchased at an auction. These fixes apply to multiple camera types and multiple body types and highly recommended. Some of these problems are due to the age and some of them are due to rough handling by owners. The door to the film chamber is held together by this sticky tape because it doesn't close properly. Here a button is missing. This button is necessary for light meter preview. This is the battery chamber, but after 40 years the original proprietary battery won't work. The buttons for opening the back door are busted on both sides. Ok, let's uh, remove this sticky tape and see if we can get to the bottom of this uh, back door problem. Ok, there are two sides to this of course. The door has the metal latch operated by the two buttons being pressed in. That's a metal latch over there. The other side has a catch which we have to get to. So let's remove the finder first. Let's put it away. Okay, on the body side you see the catch which is made of some kind of plastic. Plastic has deteriorated over time and also rough handling. So that is a problem. The latch will not fix to the catch. It just goes in and pops out again. Okay, so there's a problem with the catch. The metal part is perfect. So let's remove it and see what it's like on the other side. We need uh, small Phillips head screwdrivers but flat head will also work. Okay, that's the, metal, the uh, plastic piece. Very unfortunate, I would say, design error by Rolleiflex. Those little nibs there are very fragile and off. obviously they will fail after some time. So let's see which part is actually missing. Okay, people are available who print these on 3D printers and you can buy them um, from eBay or elsewhere. Just do a search for it and you'll get it. This is a very common problem. If you compare a good one with the original one you will see exactly which part is missing. There are two triangular pieces that go to those edges and these are missing. The top one is a good one, the bottom one is a bad one. So let's uh, highlight that section and the missing section in blue. Okay, so we need a good one to go in. Now if you're handy, like I am, you can also create this out of hard plastic using Dremel. Just create the whole piece and carve those angular bits and that should also work. I've used one myself on another Rolleiflex SLX. Almost all of them have this problem. Anyway, we'll screw it back on and see if it works now. I'll leave the link for those who will 3D print these for you in the comments. There, yeah, perfect. So far so good. It holds together and is light tight promise. So no problem there, let's uh, continue. On the sides where the tape was for some years, there's a lot of residue. It has to be removed. Use one of these glue removers. On this occasion, dissolve it from the supermarket. Quite common. Get a bit of that and use some cotton tips or Q-tips and uh, gently rub on those. Don't use alcohol or definitely not uh, lighter fluid. Although in other parts uh, there's a lot of use for those things but not for this kind of thing. Not on plastic. Okay, this is quite gentle on plastic as it turns out. But you don't want to leave it on. As soon as it's done its job, you try to wipe it off with a dry cotton tip like this very quickly get rid of it and after that you need to wipe it even further so rotate frequently then you do a final clean with a screen cleaner which is very gentle on plastic another container and this time I can use some kitchen towelette kitchen tissue it gives a larger surface more absorption 
and uh, cleans off the dissolve it, the goo remover. So that's nice and clean now, just like original shiny plastic. Perfectly good. Let's continue. The focusing screen looks super dirty, both sides, top and bottom. Let's remove it like this, almost like a slide holder. Find the best way is lens cleaning fluid, these expensive ones. Spray front and back and then clean with a chamois. That's lens cleaning chamois you use for your uh, eyeglasses. Frequently rotate that as well. Seems to be a little crack on this, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect focusing. It's right on the edge. Okay, done. Let's fold it back. Now we see that that mirror is quite dirty as well. We have to attend to that afterwards. All right, we'll do just that. Hmm, super dirty. Lots of marks there. Neglect by the owner. So what do we do? The technique is to use distilled water don't use alcohol don't use lighter fluid or anything else not even lens cleaning fluid just distilled water the most gentle thing you can get okay a strong blast of air get rid of all the bulk and a bit of distilled water very systematically you begin to wipe as often as you can you rotate and change your cotton tips Okay, the other side now. Uh -huh. Rotate the other way and do the same again. There. Do it until the cotton tip is clean. You can use multiple cotton tips for drying off the liquid. Even as you're drying it off, it's also cleaning very gently. Don't be too skimpy. Change your cotton tips frequently. I go through boxes of these every month. This particular type is uh, the type that ladies use for makeup not the ones used for cleaning ears and so on. These are very soft and they look like a paddle even as you buy them. You don't have to squeeze them. Okay, let's protect that and move on to the other defects. So far, so good. Now, the loop. Do the same thing. A moistened uh, cotton tip, you can use lens cleaner or distilled water. Now I put the cotton tip inside of uh, the chamois to give it a bit of a pointy end to clean all the way to the corners and polish it off. Now we need to do it from the inside. The same trick. First moistened cotton tip. You can use lens cleaner or just uh, distilled water. Then the chamois wrapped around cotton tip or kitchen skewer. Polish it off systematically, not randomly. Okay, that part is done. The general cleaning is done. Okay, to the next problem. You see that the leatherette has come up over that edge. It has only a very small gap. You don't want to remove the whole thing and uh, cause even further problems. So how do we get glue into that gap over there? Let's look at the techniques. Okay, just separate it very gently as far as it wants to go so that we detect the amount of problem we have. Okay, this one goes about two centimeters wide and maybe half a centimeter deep. Let's get some super glue. 
on this occasion super glue gel which is the right type for this application use a sharp kitchen skewer you should have boxes of these available for all handiwork so get a little bit on the tip they catch quite well then you put it inside try not to touch the outside and then rotate rotate as you move rotate with your fingers as you move it will spread it to the sides that's the technique don't try to inject just put it in then rotate and move along okay wood will catch it quite well and rotation will spread it quite well just where you need it and then you press it gently make sure nothing squeezes out if it squeezes out it's minimal you can clean it up away from the leatherette with some tissue on this occasion no squeezing out because we put in a very very small amount press it in multiple times then hold it together with a sharp card like this it's a proximity card from the wallet two minutes should do it with a super glue gel then it's done perfect on top you can clean it with a bit of lens cleaning fluid nice and clean perfect Let's look at the next problem. This button is missing. That's for the light meter preview. You press it and it uh, reads the light. So what are we going to do with that? There's no chance of uh, getting a donor camera just for a button. That thing in the middle is what needs to be pressed in. But we can't test it unless we have a battery because nothing works without a battery in this camera. There. So we need this kind of 3D printed new battery that is still available on eBay. I suggest that you get a couple of those before they run out. There's some well-intentioned camera enthusiasts to make these and put new rechargeable batteries inside them to give exactly the same, I think, 9 volt voltage with uh, all the contacts and everything in the right place. You won't find those in 5 years time. Get them now before they go. Nothing else will work. They come with their own charger because these are new batteries. The original ones will not work. Okay, now we have that. <coughs> it's charged as well. Put it on the S, press the shutter release button and it should work. But on this occasion, it doesn't work. So what is the problem? We have to troubleshoot that. Perfectly good battery and it doesn't work so we'll bring in another roliflex slx uh, that works properly we know that its original battery works because it has been refurbished everything inside of the original battery has been replaced with new batteries at a huge expense and we'll try that battery okay let's see we're narrowing down the problem put it on the s and press the button So the camera body is okay, something in the contact between the new battery and the body is a problem. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. It needs to be pressed in very hard and it needs to be very tight. So it needs some vinyl tape on either side to make it very tight. Now it should work. Press it right in nice and snug and it will work there you go a little bit of vinyl tape on the other side makes it very snug now to fix that missing button we need some donor plastic let's look at the candidates for some donor plastic how about this one a Dymo ribbon case maybe it's uh, too thin how about this one it's a Karcher vacuum, the hand vacuum, plastic, um, okay, too small maybe. This is the back of an HDMI cable case, mm, nice and thick, but maybe it's a bit too glossy. How about this one? The back of a 
Nokia phone dead for some years nice nice finish satin finish but a bit thin right this is a generic cheapy it has a nice texture which matches the leatherette but uh, also possibly a bit too thin hmm the texture is very nice though it's a consideration next one would be the back of a dead uh, samsung phone oh, also a nice texture but also maybe a bit too flexible because it's used to get to the battery so they made them a bit flexible again very nice texture though could be a good match let's keep going this is the back of some cheapy uh, two dollar torch led torch very nice and thick but hmm it's a bit too uneven looks cheap this is the leftover box from all the previous repairs various things off cuts this one looks interesting this is nice and thick it has a good texture okay I think we're gonna settle on this one the choice is part of a uh, back of a hard drive case previously used for other repair work now we need something for that middle part to press in what do we use how about uh, this pen inside that there's the ink chamber that should be about the right size right I don't know what these are made of it's a little bit too sort of soft but uh, that should be the right size how about that it's too soft let's get something a bit harder how about this pen inside of that if a few parts might fit hmm some hard part maybe it's made of uh, acrylic or something like that will that fit no too big but the ink chamber should fit like the other one and it's harder harder I think it's made of PVC certainly harder let's settle on this one okay so we have that middle bit in order to test it we need to put the lens back on otherwise the light meter doesn't work it works with the lens so let's press it in does it work mm, yeah that presses in it's not sufficient though there's something even further inside of that that has to be pressed in it's something sharp so we need two elements a sharp thing to go to the inside and then a sleeve around it let's just measure um, the actual plastic both sides okay we need to cut the plastic out of that off cut so it was um, 18.3 times 12.3 millimeters don't ask me to convert to inches okay so we have to mark on the plastic of course pen won't work so we'll score it like this because we have to cut it very accurately mark this is precision surgical work okay now we've marked it we have to cut it you won't do it with one cut you have to do it with 20 cuts mild pressure not a lot keep going keep going with incredible patience eventually it gets to the other side and we have perfectly good rectangular piece of plastic nice and thick just the right size as that okay, we can even improve that by uh, sanding the edges now we have to cut that ink chamber from the pen trial and error different thicknesses and one of them should work it's not possible to really measure something that small so we put it in there like a surgical operation put the button on top and press the middle and it should work if the battery is still working but we need that uh, sharp thing in the middle so again the trusty old skewer from the kitchen we have to cut a little bit of it and put in the middle of that a little bit of skewer in the middle of that sleeve and then the plastic on top of that we're replicating every part of the original element that goes on top okay now we have to test that 
Yes, it works. We have to score the middle of that because we have to use some super glue gel. Score it for maximum adhesion. Okay, that's our super glue gel, which we have to put very carefully in the middle of that without getting the whole thing locked up. Otherwise, you're completely stuck. So we do that <coughs> very carefully. Test it. <coughs> Hold it for two minutes, very still, very even, and it's done. Super glue gel is magic. So that button is repaired. Now the end buttons, they're totally busted, and parts of it have fallen off. We have to first stabilize it before we put new buttons on. First stabilize it as a base, we use um, epoxy, part A, part B. Uh, the two parts have to be mixed in equal measures and uh, then used within four minutes. You have to be very fast, everything ready, okay, uh, masked off and we use it like a putty. It's not the final finish of course because it's quite rough but it will stabilize everything underneath it at the strength of epoxy. Then a bit of sanding after say 10 minutes or 15 minutes to make it nice and smooth nice fully stable now we need to measure it to see how we're going to find buttons that are the same size to go on top to be stuck on top like a cap we are not going to be satisfied until it's perfect so how about the end of this pen it's one of these GP pens it's perfectly nice and slightly curved and so on oh it's a little bit too small though it's supposed to be about 12 millimeters Let's try another thing. How about these um, pilot pens, the Sharpies? The end looks pretty good, just about the right shape. Let's just take them out and measure them properly. Unfortunately, I have a doubt, uh, a bit too small, yeah, 11 point something, or 11, about 11. Now we need about 12 or 12 point something. How about these studs? They're used for leather works, for shoes and so on. You get those repair places, you can buy some of those, put a, put a handful of those, that's just about right, yeah, 12.2, close enough, 0.2 millimeters is nothing, we'll use those, pinch the middle, the metal in the middle, pinch it, then uh, twist it off several times, don't pull it out, twist it off, metal fatigue uh, will loosen it and comes off, now it's perfectly flat, let's test it on the um table there yeah perfectly flat good that can go on top of the depressed and uh, damaged buttons but we're not going to be satisfied until we get them perfectly black after spray painting them with a car paint now we need uh, uh, contact cement like this one or super glue gel again contact cement allows you more time to work it because it needs to be dry before we put the two sides together. So you surgically um, apply it very carefully and then use uh, spongy double sticky tape to pick up one and put on top of the other. There you go. Very careful. Okay, that is done and it's quite good. But the edges, the edges are still slightly exposed. The edges of the glue and so on. So it needs to be sprayed after application one more time there it is perfectly good all the edges are sprayed so the spray goes even inside of the edge where the glue was and it's exactly like original you can compare it with the buttons on the front and uh, they are identical okay it's time to put it all together and do a final test okay 11 good no problem excellent the job is done and the mission is accomplished the only thing that remains is a final film test so let's put together the perfect assembly 80 millimeter lens lens hood and I would say the 45 degree finder which is very cool very practical especially in bright sun 
I hope this video was uh, useful in showing you some tips and tricks and if you are happy with the results please subscribe and share the next morning This is a film cartridge. I have uh, a very expensive Portra 400 or Ektar 100. Uh, don't waste it. These are so hard to get now. I'll go for this one. This is how you put the film into this cartridge. Get rid of all the bits and pieces. This is bi-directional, so it doesn't matter which side. So how about this side? Doesn't make any difference. This is uh, spring-loaded, so lift it up and film just drops in. Film goes in the direction that you would normally expect, not not the back-to-front way of say Hasselblad. Give it a little bit of tension. All right and then turn it around look for this lining up with a with an arrow that appears that's the arrow okay line it up good open the back this symbol shows full empty <laughs> full on this side empty on that side and close so that was 100 you rotate this one that's DIN that's ASA so we'll go for 100 you can see the 100 turn it off and go